and welcome to this Splash Potion of Weakness Brewer tutorial. Um, my last design I quite liked, but um, it involves using nether wart, and because weakness potions don't need nether wart, I decided to make separate designs for them, for if you want to be curing a ton of vill villagers. So there's various designs depending on what you want. The simplest design is this, where you have to remove the potions manually, and then you press the button and it dispenses the ingredients and brews another set. Very simple. The second one is a little bit more sophisticated. Um, it empties the bottles at the start of every cycle and makes new ones. So you press the button to empty the bottles and it'll start a new cycle, and then those will stay there until you press the button again. The final design here is for if you just want to be brewing loads and loads and loads of them. Um, you just pull the lever and it'll brew them and keep brewing them um, until you switch it off again and then it'll finish that cycle. Empty them and then stop. And this is a clockless brewer so that reduces lag a little bit. Occasionally you'll get a water bottle sneak through. Um, this is due to the timings with the redstone. Um, it is possible to eliminate that but it makes it one block wider so I decided to go with a smaller version. To build the simplest one is very straightforward. You place blocks like this. Your brewing stand goes here. You have your droppers here and here. Hopper into the brewing stand on top and from the back. Redstone here and here. Repeater there button here, doesn't matter what button, and then finally a chest here. This is the one you put the bottles in um, for easy refilling. You could also feed in the blaze powder this way if you want. You put it in the final slot there and the final slot here and it'll just trickle through. And then lastly you would put your ingredients in these and it doesn't matter which way around they go. The second one is almost identical, um, but you have your chest here and you want a redstone torch on the side of that block there and then a hopper into that and your brewing stand on top. And then you can fill in sides, same as before, hopper on top and into it from the back your observers, not observers, <laughs> droppers, <laughs> there, block, block, redstone, redstone under here as well, redstone and a repeater. And here ideally you want to use a wooden button because that has a long enough delay that all the bottles will empty out um, when you press it, otherwise one will get left in here. And then you would just fill the um, droppers the same way you did for the other one and this chest the same way you did for the other one as well. This last one is uh, obviously a little bit more complicated. Um, let's just start by building a 4x4 wall here. The clockless mechanism is uh, again adapted from Etho's trailing nether wart idea. Um, which I used in my other brewer as well. So place chests like this and then you need um, stairs so that they will open and your your <laughs> I'm doing great broom stand goes there and then hopper into it from the side Upper into it from above and another one and then make a chain of them like this. That's where your ingredients will go. And then you want a dropper facing into this one and a dropper facing into this one. So a dropper into each of these. Next, um, 
we put in the comparator that measures this hopper. So comparator there, and then a slab there. Got to be a slab, block, and a block, and a redstone on top of these. Then you want a sticky piston facing up here, and an observer facing that way there. And that is what tells these to send out new ingredients when the cycle restarts. And then you want a redstone torch here, and one underneath that hopper, and then redstone dust there, and that controls the locking and unlocking of the hoppers. And that redstone torch there is what will send, will power this piston here. And then to switch it on and off, you put the lever there, redstone torch on the back, redstone signal on here, two repeaters into a block here, place redstone dust there and cut the wire. And then you need to continue this in some way, either with redstone dust there, or um, say a lever or a button, anything that will make this a line rather than a dot because we need it to not be affecting this torch here. So this does make the design one block wider, but it, you should be able to fit it into most spaces anyway. Now, the next thing you need to do is place 22 blocks in this hopper here. Um, that's what makes this comparator sensitive to any additional items that go through. And then you want to place your ingredients in these two droppers here. It doesn't matter which way around they are, but the ingredient you place in this dropper, you also need to place one of in the brewing stand at the very start, and that's what, make the cl that's what makes the clockless um, system work. And then additionally, you might need to update this torch, depending on what order you've built this in, um, so that it's on when the system is off. Then, all you need to do is fill this with bottles and blaze powder like you did with the other systems. Now if you turn it on, you'll see it'll fill with bottles and blaze powder and it'll start brewing and it'll just keep going until you switch it off. So that's the three systems. Um, I hope you find them useful and if you have any questions then obviously please do ask and also have a nice day.